Good morning. Good morning. Is this Caroline? It is indeed. Is this Tiffany? It is. Let me do the official introduction, ladies and gentlemen. We are very excited to welcome our featured guest for this evening. She is an actress who everyone will fondly remember as the adorable butterfly Joy Bugaloo. We're very excited to welcome Miss Caroline Ellis to the show. You're on the air with Terry and Tiffany. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. I want you to know, Caroline, this is Terry, and I'm Tiffany's father. I'm an original Bugaloos fan, and you right now, <laughs> at this moment, are fulfilling my childhood fantasy. Oh, how wonderful. How wonderful. <laughs> I'm, I'm very pleased to speak to you. I'm really enjoying listening. I'm enjoying listening to your voice because Tiffany told me that she gave you what we refer to as a warning call. Of, of course, you're British, but you're living in Spain. She thinks your accent has merged a little bit, where it's part British and part Spanish. You have a little twinge of Spanish. I don't think so. I don't, so well, I, obviously, I, it's different because I'm the one that's, uh, that's speaking. One or two other people have said the same. And a lot of the time I'm sort of speaking Spanglish because obviously I'm English, but I'm a Spanish-speaking country. I do speak Spanish, but I don't think I've got a Spanish accent. I can't believe that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got to ask you, we, of course, want to talk about your miraculous career and, and one of the greatest kids shows ever to be graced on the American television screen. But for everybody that's wondering how you're doing and where you are and, and what's up, how was it, or, or how did it happen that you wound up in Spain? Um, well, to keep it brief, I was obviously uh, in England. I had got married. This was quite a few years after doing the, the Bagaloo show. Uh -huh. And uh, I had got married. And uh, my, my husband, or my ex-husband now, uh, he was working, uh, working abroad. I was working in England, and he always said that, you know, the English climate, I always hated the English climate as well, ah. especially after living in California. Yeah. I mean, you know, it made it even worse when I got back to England, and then those harsh, cold, damp, grey days. So, uh, anyway, when I got pregnant with my daughter, uh, we decided to, I was going to stop work anyway, for obvious reasons, and we decided to go and have a holiday home in Spain because we were both uh, had been very keen on windsurfing and had been there on windsurfing holidays. So we decided to buy a holiday home. And uh, that holiday home ended up being a house on, on, on a mountain with lovely views. And we ended up living there when, when Sasha, my daughter, was born. Wow. So we were living over in Spain then. But the plan was, obviously, later on, when Sasha was perhaps a bit older, to go back to England and go back to to acting. But mm -hmm. the trouble was, I just the Spanish climate. It was where we were living. It was just so similar to, to California. Wow. And uh, I decided that uh, it was a wonderful place for a child to grow up. So to cut a long story short, anyway, the marriage broke up. I decided to stay there with Sasha. And... Uh, was 32 years ago <laughs> so here we are 32 years and I'm still here I have moved about I've lived in different places in Spain um, which is lovely because then you get to know the different cultures and the, the country but the Spanish people are very family orientated and they adore children wow. and uh, I just feel I think as well to be perfectly honest I lived in London or you know till till I came to Spain I felt it was a much safer place for a child to grow up, you know, with all the terrible things that happen to children, which is a lot worse now. Right. Right. I just felt it was such a, mar a marvelous place for my daughter to grow up and just see, see what happens. Obviously, everybody thought I was going to go back to England when the marriage broke up and go back to, to working and whatever. But with a child, it's not, it's not so easy. Yeah. So, anyway, here I am. I've moved about in Spain, as I said. I've lived at different places. And I'm now on an island called Mallorca. And I've been here for 10 years. And it's absolutely perfect. It's wow. really, really lovely. Obviously, me and my daughter has grown up. Uh, I'm a grandmother, I'm happy to say. And uh, the planet is, is just very similar to, to California. Uh, but I've got so many friends in California, obviously because of uh, the show. 
so uh, we stay in touch with this uh, Facebook. There you <laughs> go. As we all do. Well, we're getting inundated here with messages from your fans that are listening, and most of the guys are saying they're really sorry to hear that your marriage didn't last forever, but they'd like to buy a plane ticket to Spain <laughs> so that they can look you up because now they might have a chance to actually be uh, Mr. Bugaloo because... <laughs> no, wait, yeah, I... But- I, I they might be disappointed because obviously I'm a little bit older now than I was then. <laughs> well, I have to ask you though, Caroline, because when when we announced that you were going to be on the show, uh, I we did nothing but get message after message and private message and posts on Facebook and emails and tweets and boys. Well, now men that were boys at the time that the Bugaloos was out yeah. across the world talking about, I had such a crush on Joy. So <laughs> d- how many, how many, how often do you hear this? Is it like a daily thing for you? No, in general, no. Uh, every few days I check it. And um, obviously it's just marvelous to hear what people say the memories of back then and that now their children are watching it and sometimes even the grandchildren are watching it and uh, as we all know at the time and and still now i mean my daughter used to watch it it it's it's magic for children obviously Mm -hmm. but the 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 men the boys then the men how many of them have said Oh, you were my first crush. Right. Yes. You know, Joy was my first crush. I mean, I think it's it's just wonderful. They, I can't believe that all these uh, people still remember me from from the show. You know, forty years on. Well, is it I, forty years? I can't remember. <laughs> I, I've got to tell you, Not with, quite. Not with, quite. with all the with all the comments that we have gotten saying, I was so in love with Caroline. My favorite comment, you've got to hear this one. One guy summed it up yeah. when everybody said, I was so in love with Caroline. One guy said, and who wasn't? <laughs> so, yeah. there you yeah. go. That sums it up. Yeah. And, and no, by the way, you're still very lovely. beautiful. You're still very beautiful. You're still, as we say in America, cute as a bug in a rug. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No. Thank you. Yes, I put one or two videos, obviously, on on my uh, Facebook page, mm-hmm. and you may have known I put one on recently from a TV show I did in in England, which was also hugely, hugely popular. Okay, I wasn't a leading role in it, but um, I did a convention, and it was filmed by my, by my friend Joanne Good, who so I put it on the on the website it's on it's on youtube i think we've had thousands and thousands of viewers so <laughs> people have been able to see what i look like today and compare me to <laughs> all that time ago in the bugaloos now of course we're going to talk more about the bugaloos but a lot what a lot of fans might not know is that you started acting i believe it was like age six right well i i went to to drama school, uh, it was a theatrical school, um, when I was seven. I had been doing ballet, and you know, just at the age of five and six, and absolutely loved it. And I went to a theatrical school because uh, we thought, or my parents thought it was a good idea for, for me to continue with my dancing and, uh, and see what happened. So there was a theatrical school not too far away from where we lived, which was uh, sort of North London. And, uh, but as I got older, um, I got more interested in the acting side. But uh, yes, you, you know, from the age of seven, you're, you're involved in doing TV commercials or modeling or programs or whatever. But my first, my first really professional uh, work was when I was 12 and uh, I was at the London Palladium for six months with uh, a name probably you know a lot of Americans won't won't know called Frankie Vaughan and, and other English well-known well-known people but Frankie Vaughan was a very well-known singer at the time and I was in that for six months it was uh, it was uh, Puss in Boots pantomime Mm-hmm. Uh, so that was my first experience in the theatre, and then immediately I finished that, 
And then I played Louisa in The Sound of Music in the West End of London. Oh. Obviously, that was a fantastic, fantastic break. Yes. And uh, I met a lot of people there that uh, one or two of them are still friends today. So then I was 13, and I played Louisa, which I'm very proud of because it was just a magical show. And uh, that was with people like Susan George. Do you remember Susan George? Oh, yeah. I and, yeah, uh, yeah other, other, one or two other well-known names came out of, out of that show because obviously it was a musical. And uh, that was the first proper experience, professional experience of singing mm -hmm. uh, in the sound of music, having to do harmonies and, uh, and everything. So it was, a good, it was a good start to my career. But I'm not a singer. I never had been a singer. But after The Sound of mood it, Music, I ended up doing lots of other musicals in the <laughs> West End and then as I was older. You know, these things, these things happen. But I have never, even to this day, think of myself as a singer. I'm an actress who sings and dances. And uh, especially now, people have to be multi-talented to, to right. get work. You have to right. be able to do everything. Um, you know, including all different sports and sure. riding horses, which I, as you possibly know, I do. I've got two horses here at home and still, still love horse riding. Yes. So, uh, yeah, my, I didn't actually get my first professional uh, job I, that I can remember at seven. I may have done one or two TV commercials. I think of it as from when I was 12 years of age at the London Palladium. Well, you know, growing up when you did uh, in in the UK was when there was so much great music coming out. And I saw you mention on Facebook, you said this was a, a photo or something from your Ready Steady Go days. I guess that was a program you had. It was yes. like, like our bandstand or whatever. Uh, were you a fan of shows like That's that? Right. And, and, and what kind of music did you listen uh, to? Oh, yes. It was obviously in, in, in well, in the years, the 60s, you had so many famous groups appearing on the on the scene. You had uh, the Beatles. Of I mean, you could just go on forever. Uh, it was a wonderful time to to be uh, uh, a young person and a teenager in the sixties. Carnaby Street, mini skirt. You know, it was just unbelievable. It was just in incredible. Um, so, and I was lucky enough because I was to, I was in the business. I had uh, been modeling in fashion shows for Kathy, Mc for Kathy McGowan, who was the presenter of Ready, Steady, Go, mm -hmm. and she asked me to wear her clothes. And, of course, because I was wearing her clothes, she wanted me on Ready, Steady, Go, and <laughs> dancing, just in the audience. Wow. But, of course, then I, I saw met a lot of the, the big uh, stars or pop groups, bands, whatever you like to call them, rock groups of, of that time. So I was, I was extremely extremely uh, privileged, if you like, to, to be able to get every Friday. I was at school still, so I quickly change into my, my mini skirt and, and gear, and uh, <laughs> then I'd have to put on the cap in the gown right. uh, clothes and, and go there, and uh, uh, it was just wonderful. It was just fantastic. Well, I think we can thank the Beatles, because they were named after insects, and maybe that influenced <laughs> Sid and Marty Croft. Did you ever imagine growing up as a teen in the 60s that you would be part of what was a TV-formed rock group, a lot like the Monkees, and, and wound up doing these rock and roll songs, and, and basically your character was a bug. The Beatles weren't a bug. They were called the Beatles, but you were a bug. I mean, did you ever think you'd ever wind up in a show? That's right. Yeah, no, I never imagined. I mean, I was, I was getting a lot of work. By that time, obviously, I was a bit older. I'd had a fair bit of experience in more in the theatre, uh, a little bit in television and, and whatever, but more in the theatre. So uh, when, when we saw the advert in the, in the English newspaper, the sketch, mm -hmm. this huge, I mean, it was just enormous in England, you know, looking for youngsters to go to Hollywood. I mean, who doesn't want to go to Hollywood in England? You know, it's a thing when you're in the profession. Um, and that's where it all started, obviously, with an advert. I had an agent, obviously, because I've been working. And so off I went with a friend, not thinking in a million years that I would be chosen. 
to audition for the for the Bagaloos in the newspaper. They had described what they were looking for and and what the plans were and everything. And uh, so so yes, absolutely fantastic. I never imagined in a million, million years that I would ever go to Hollywood. So, so it was like a dream come true when I got the job. <laughs> so, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> so here you are, a, a young girl. And you had to tell your parents, I'm going to the United States. What did they think? Were they worried about you coming over here being as crazy as we are? No, they knew I was, I don't think they were worried. I think they were really, really happy for me. Well, I know they were really happy for me. Uh, they were over the moon. My, my father was more, he wasn't so interested, obviously. He would had to put me up from the theater every day. As a, as a child in sure. different shows, which I think he got a bit fed up with. <laughs> he took me up at 11 o'clock at night every night in London and then take me home and then take me to school the next day. So it was probably pretty hard work for him, to be perfectly honest. But no, of course, he was extremely pleased and happy for me. But my mother was more outgoing. She, she had stars in her eyes. Oh, okay. you know? She couldn't believe it. She was more into into uh you know gosh her daughter's going to go to hollywood and she they were both so proud obviously both right. so proud so, so no i was very lucky in that respect that my parents didn't at all even think of putting any any barriers or were worried for me they, they knew well they knew me pretty well and they knew that i would just go and do the best possible job i i could yeah well can you give us an idea like what the auditions are like because people think that getting a role is so easy. Was there a lot of other girls? And what are some of the questions they asked? Did, did they have you sing and dance? Or what was the audition like? Yeah, no, the, it was tough. Or, if anybody thinks auditions are easy, they're kidding themselves. Auditions are really tough, whatever you're auditioning for, because there's a lot of good competition out there, a lot of talented people out there. Uh, some people are better singers, some people are better dancers, actors, etc. But it's tough, and I think probably today it's even tougher uh, because, you know, the, the standards that are expected of people are extremely high. But back then, obviously, no, with all the advertising, people came from, from all over the United Kingdom to, to audition. A lot of the people had no experience. A lot of the youngsters, it was just saying, well, you never know, you know, they, and they went along and... Anyway, so the auditions went on every single day uh, for, for a week at the EMI studios in, in London. And uh, the, day, the first day that I went, I went with a girlfriend, and there were just crowds of people, masses of people waiting to go in. And I just said, oh, come on, let's forget it. Let's go home. This is ridiculous. Um, because when you have an agent who, who arranges an audition for you, normally you, you have a time, you have right. a set time. You may have to wait a bit. But with this, we'd just gone up on spec sort of thing. So we were just one of, one of thousands. But anyway, she said, no, come on, now we've made the effort. Let's, let's join the queue. So the queue, you know, they did get through people fairly quickly at the beginning, which was, thank goodness, so we just had to go in uh, at about a dozen, twelve at a time, and uh, into a room. Sid and Marty Croft were there, and uh, we all had to sit in like a, a semicircle, and each one had to stand up and give their name, and um, then, then they said, uh, uh, right, you, each one of you will have to sing, uh, you know, briefly. So that's where it started. So when it came to my turn in the semicircle, I thought, uh, well, I'll sing, I'll sing yesterday. <laughs> a there Beatles you go. song. A Beatles song. There you so go. I, a Beatles song. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But I, I, it was just such a beautiful song. So anyway, I sang yesterday. Didn't have to sing all of it because obviously they had too many people to get through. They had to sing for two or three minutes. Uh -huh. So uh, I sang that and they said, okay. Please wait outside, um, and we'll, we'll let you know who you want to stay. Anyway, they came out a few minutes later and said, Carol is, um, my name was on the list. Uh, one had to. This went on, and obviously, uh, as the days went by, they put it down to a few, but then it became harder. We had to dance. We had to do different scenarios. It was tough. And yes. then at, at night, um, 
uh, we were invited, they were staying at the, at the, I think they were staying at the Dorchester, we were invited to the Dorchester to eat meals with them because they wanted to check that we could behave ourselves <laughs> if we were in restaurants. <laughs> um, well, <laughs> but I suppose when, when they're making a big investment in you, yeah, they want course. to make sure that you can behave yourself and, you know, not uh, put them in a embarrassing situation. <laughs> uh, if if you have to go to restaurants, et cetera, et cetera. So anyway, we had nice meals. That went on for, for, for two or three nights as well. And they gradually, you know, siphoned it down to just a few of us. Now, there was another girl. She was from the same agent as me, uh, Jane. And they got it down to the two of us. Uh -oh. And because both of us were in, a, we were working uh, that week, well, uh -huh. late afternoon doing fashion shows. And... Um, so we were both doing this fashion show. Then, of course, the, the newspapers got hold of it or the press got hold of it and made a thing of one of these two girls is going to be the lucky person that's going to be blown out of Hollywood, etc., etc. But the worst thing was, the other thing was, I knew, they told me, Marty Croft told me that I had the part, it was mine, um, before they had decided on the boys, that's what he, he told me. Oh, and so not to say us. anything. Okay. So uh, I, I felt so awful for Jane because we were still doing the fashion show. Oh. I knew oh. I was doing it, and I knew that she wasn't, but she was still hopeful, obviously. Yeah. And I felt so awful. I felt really awful, but at the same time, I felt so happy. <laughs> but anyway, when, we, when Marty told me I had the job, I went, I drove back home, it was about 11 o'clock at night because we'd been out having dinner. And my mother was waiting for me to see how I'd got on. And I said, she just looked at my face. My mother just looked at my face <laughs> and my eyes were all starry. And uh, she said, okay, okay, tell me, how did it go? And I said, well, you've got to promise me you won't tell anyone. <laughs> you know, because she would be so excited to probably go and tell all her friends. I said, well, I got it, but we're not allowed to say anything. We've got to keep quiet for a couple of days. Not even the agent. Not even allowed to tell my agent. So anyway, she was going for the moon. No, oh, it, was, it was tough. And the, the rest is history. Tough, and, and they always are. And if anybody thinks auditions are easy, uh, they're kidding themselves. They're, they're very hard work. It's only when you get a name. Uh, like I, later on, I got work because I didn't have to necessarily audition for it or only go in at the end to the people. Right. Because by that time, I had experience and uh, producers, directors knew my work. And so I was lucky lucky in that respect. Well, that I didn't have to go through the, the rigmarole from the beginning again. That's right. When you got all that work behind you, they could just look at that and know. I wanted to ask you because you mentioned the cross. Now, we had on one of the members from the Bay City Rollers, and they also work for the Cross, and he told me that one of the Cross was a little hard to deal with, and the other one was really nice. How did you find them? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Uh -oh. I agree. Marty, Marty Cross, well, it was well, Marty Cross was the, the more difficult one. Um, he was uh, the businessman. Right. He was the one, you know, who was well, basically the business. Business. Sid was a creator, mm -hmm. and Sid was—I won't say his head was up in the clouds, but he was the creator, the more imaginative one. And you could suggest something to to, to Sid, and he would. So he, you could see his mind working. Uh, making a, a picture of what you had perhaps suggested or ideas or whatever, and he was open to any to any ideas, any new ideas. But Marty Croft, though, Marty Croft would just be much tougher, if you like. Mm. And he was the one; he was a businessman, basically. Right. Now, so, although they were brothers, they were so completely different, which is probably why uh, it worked so well because Marty right. kept. Sid's feet on the ground, there you go. and the Sid was the one with, the, with his <laughs> head in the clouds, if you like, but in the nicest possible way. Don't get me wrong. The Archie Cross was a man, but he was a businessman, and everything, everything was was business. You know, yeah. money, success. Uh, we can only do this if we if we get a, yeah whatever. You know, he was a businessman. Now, once the once the guys uh, were finally cast for the, the remaining three bugaloos, 
And uh, even when you guys kind of went into production, you guys came out to L.A. and and all that kind of stuff. What was the relationship like between you and the other three guys? I mean, was it all kind of like buddy buddy? I mean, you're the only girl in in a group of boys. So how was that camaraderie? I know. <laughs> Uh, was my lucky? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. No, they they were super. Uh, three completely different characters. Very very different. Um, so no, I, they were like brothers. I got three brothers. So in a way, I had been used to growing up with three boys in the house, mm-hmm. and here I was, you know, working with three boys in the same. We were living in the same house. We had like a a secretary, a private secretary. You could say come chaperone, but obviously we were 19, 20 years of age, and old enough uh, that we didn't need to have a have a chaperone. But she was more like a private secretary. But she wrote that uh, uh, for us all the all the outings and and making sure we're at the studio on time and things like that. Uh-huh. And I suspect that she was there to keep an eye on us, that there was no hanky-panky going on. (laughs) Well, I can assure you there was no hanky-panky going on because we were there to do a job. And to be perfectly honest, we were exhausted because once we started work, you know, you finish work, all you want to do is collapse. Uh, It never entered my mind. Uh, That probably sounds very strange. Uh, It never entered my mind to to um, feel too attracted to any of them, put it that way. So, uh, so, but they're so completely different. I don't think any, well, this sounds awful. I don't think any of them <laughs> probably were, were my type. I don't know. Um, but uh, no, they were like brothers. And we all respected one another. We were all there to do a job. We were all there as professionals. And so that's, that's what we had to get on with. But we were too, <laughs> I was going to say another word then. We were too tired or too lacking to, to think of, so, of anything else. So, so you're very, you're very. Sweet. You might have to edit that out. I don't no. know if, if that word is allowed in America. So you're very sweet, and I'm sure you were like everybody's favorite kid sister. But I know guys. Did they ever have a crush on you? You said you didn't them. About but the two Johns and Wayne. I mean, did they did they ever ask yeah. you anything? Ask you out anything? Mm. Mm, no, but you'll have to ask them. <laughs> I can't answer that. I think, I think possibly, I think possibly, uh, possibly yes. But uh, I'm not going to say who or or what or when. But at the same time, they knew that uh, I wasn't going to to take them up on it. At least if I was, it would have been after after we had finished doing the series and the tour and everything else because, uh, you know, that wasn't on my mind. I was right. there. I've been working in the business long enough just to know that when you're, when you're doing a job as a professional, you get on the job and you mustn't, you can't let anything else in, interfere. Mm-hmm. I did start going out with somebody over there when, when we were working and it was none of the boys. Yeah. I did have a boyfriend over there for a while. His name was John as well, just to confuse things. But it, <laughs> it wasn't Little John or, or Big John. I, I, would think it would, I would think it would be intimidating because, I well, I was on this stupid dating site one time and I made a date with this woman. I found out her father played H.R. Puff and stuff and I canceled the date <laughs> because I was afraid. Oh, because, really? Did you ever get anybody... How fascinating. Did, did you ever get anybody that was intimidated to date you because of that big show you had and the character that was all wholesome? Mm-hmm. And... No, when we were over there, we were pretty much protected from all of this. And when we were doing the tour... And the phone mail, the thing, the thing was, at the end of the, the program, you know, we used to say, don't forget to write or whatever. Mm-hmm. But where did, where did these fans write to? They write, wrote to the studios. They had a, a fan mail department, somebody to look after all the fan mail. Sadly, we never saw any oh, of it. It was all handled by, by other people. Yeah. Um, and of course, in those days, there was no Facebook book or anything like that. Yeah. So we never saw any of the fan mail. But when we did the tour, we would go, we would have um, autograph signing sessions and, and appearances here, there and everywhere. 
And then, of course, the fans could come and, and meet us and see us and would sign autographs and the record and all the rest of it. Uh, and, but, of course, it was crowds of people. Uh, it was just crowds of people. It wasn't any one or two themselves. But, uh, no, I never had any problem. But maybe I didn't know about it, if there were any problems. Well, that's know. good. I, I know for a fact, uh, because of reputation, and he was a great guy, but he, he loved the ladies. If there was one cast member that had a crush on you, it was probably Billy Barty. <laughs> Oh, oh, little Billy. <laughs> yeah, little oh, Billy, lovely. who plays Sparky. He 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 loved the ladies, and and I'm sure he had his eye on you. No, but you mentioned uh, the record. You guys actually put out an album. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Yes, yes. It was the songs from the show. Uh, obviously, the, with the show going out, they bought the album out. Uh, I think while the show was still running, mm -hmm. and uh, it didn't do too badly. We were watching it go up the charts in Billboard. Uh, I think in general, uh, I can't remember. I can't remember where it got to. Um, I think it was just out outside the top fifty. Mm. It's a shame it didn't go higher. But in individual states, in individual places, then uh, in some places it, it did a lot better. And I think in one or two places, because obviously the, the main track, excuse me, was uh, for a friend, mm -hmm. uh, but on the B side was Senses of Our World. Yeah. And I know in one or two places they flipped it over and it was Senses of the World, of Our World, that did better than for a friend. So, you know, that was, that was quite interesting. But yeah, the, the record did okay. Uh, I think uh, it would have been nicer if it, if it had done better. But anyway, you know, it's this competition and uh, there was a lot of good music out at that time, as you know, a lot mm -hmm. of good groups and, and whatever. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, it was a shame we never did another record in a way. But anyway, it was a shame we never did another series. <laughs> yeah, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people have compared you guys to the Monkees. Uh, is that comparison because it was it a situation I know you guys sang... And, and the monkeys sang, but did you play your own instruments? Because supposedly it was said the monkeys didn't, which I know they did. But did you guys play as well yeah. as sing? Well, Little John was was a drummer, and he'd been playing on the drums for a few years, and he still is today. He's still involved in music and and with his drums. And he and well, Billy Barty as well was was a drummer. He was a fantastic drummer. Mm. So he and Little John got on like a, like a, uh, you know, they just got on fantastically. Sure. Uh, but, but yes, I didn't play any instruments, on, um, being acting and singing. I didn't play any instruments. When I was in California, uh, Little John and Big John sort of showed me, or I got a guitar and showed me the basics. And then I started having lessons in, in playing the guitar, um, you know, one at a time, which wasn't very often. So, yes, I had my guitar for a few years. I can't say I played it well. No, I didn't. But, you know, I could just string along, <laughs> basically. <laughs> but uh, the monkeys, of course, were, were put together as well, commercially. Yeah. I mean... Uh, Little Dave, he, well, we, we got to know him. he was English, as you know, and he yes. used to come up and see us on, on Sunday, sometimes come up for tea, English tea. Awesome. And so he became, he became a good friend. The other, the other boys of the monkeys, we didn't really, we didn't really know so well. But, um, but, you know, they were put together as a commercial product, as we were. And, of course, they took off. They were put together, I think, more as a pop group with a TV series. Right. We were put together more as a TV series with, uh, you know, that could sing. I think that was, that was the difference. The, the type of um, programs that they did were completely different to the Bubbles, as you know. Uh, they were, were, I think they were more aiming for the teenage market, whereas the Bubbles was, at the time aiming for the younger group, although a lot of adults and teenagers ended up watching it for, because they just thought it was way out sort of thing. 
So diff- different sort of product. We were a product. The monkeys were a product, but in a in a different way. Well, the m- monkeys got the monkeys got lucky in the fact that they got to do concerts on the road. But you guys never got a chance to do that, did you? No, unfortunately, unfortunately, we didn't. We did TV appearances and, and other appearances, but we never actually did a, a tour. Uh, you know, singing and, and playing, playing on these. And on the record, we had an orchestra, uh-huh. uh, as you you know, you can hear that in in the music. Who who was fantastic. So if you're going to do a, a I mean, other groups as well have have. Uh, orchestras or small orchestras sure. when they go on tour but uh, these days in general no, it's more the lighting and the special effects that that take over uh, but in those days that wasn't the case so uh, so yeah you know that's how things happen and of course they were planning for us to do the film with Columbia right. so I, I don't think the cross uh, were, were looking at what should we say, a pop group as such. For them, they're, as you know from their other TV series, it was more television and possibly film. That was more their, their, their product. I'm trying to think of the word. That was more their, their um, speciality, yeah, if you like. Now, you guys did, yeah. you guys did uh, 17 episodes of The Bugaloos. It was one season. How did it end up coming to an end? And did the Crofts ever come to you guys and explain why you guys didn't go into uh, additional seasons? Mm-hmm. No, that was really disappointing. Uh, because when we, it was in, well, we've done the Macy's Parade in New York and other, other appearances. That was in December. And they said, okay, you know, you can, it's time to have a holiday, which we were quite happy about. And they said, uh, you know, would you like to go to Hawaii? Uh, I thought, oh, that's, that's great. Or would you just like to go home and spend Christmas with the family? Well, we hadn't seen the family for a long, long time. Okay. We we're all youngsters, and for, for many of us, it was the first time away from home. So, you yeah, know, a little bit homesick. So we decided to go Hawaii. Maybe we should have gone to Hawaii. It would have been lovely to go to Hawaii. But obviously, family family is important. So we went back back to England and uh, had Christmas with our families, expecting to get a call to go back for the film. But that never happened. Columbia got into financial trouble. <coughs> excuse me. And then eventually went bankrupt. The film was cancelled. So that left the cross, I think, a little bit in the air about what to do with us. Right. Um, probably, if we had made the film, if that had gone ahead, if Columbia hadn't gone gone bankrupt, if we had done the film, then maybe another TV series would have come along. The TV series was obviously NBC. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so, but we never heard anything, nothing, and um, which was really disappointing. We were all talking to one another, saying, "Well, what's happening? Have you heard anything?" No you know, phoning up the cross and saying, oh, they say, well, just hang on and hang on. But nothing, nothing. And time was going by. So how long do you wait? You know, you can wait forever. And then in this business, you know, people could say, oh, yes, we want you for the past. And then you never hear anything any, you know, anymore. And then you find it's gone to somebody else. So you, you can never tell. But anyway, we waited and waited. We were getting no answers. So in the end, you just come to a point and say, well, I better get on and, and carry on with my career doing something else. And if they phone up and want us back, well, then then we'll we'll see how we can do this. I had been offered a, a fantastic uh, TV series in England, which was a great opportunity. I didn't want to, to lose it. Uh-huh. Uh, so this was, I think, in April 1971. 70, and uh, so I decided to accept that. Of course, since I signed the contract for that, then I wouldn't have been able to do the bugaloos for for a few months. But we never heard from them. Well, we never heard from them. You know, you so say really weird. Sure, you yeah. say you say that they offered you to when you were uh, like on vacation, hiatus, whatever you want to call it, to to go to Hawaii or go back home to England. 
Uh, so I don't see why that would have upset them, but I read somewhere that the Cross were not too happy you guys went back to England. Uh, do you think they were upset you went back home? And do you think if you have stayed in the States, then maybe they'd have reconsidered and had another season? Well, they offered us if we want to go back home. So I don't know where you heard that or read that, mm -hmm. but we never got the impression okay. that... Uh, uh, you know, I, I don't know, maybe that maybe they were, but then why did they ask if we wanted to go back home? They said, if you want to, you can go back home for Christmas. Yeah, sure. So they, they cannot say afterwards that they didn't want us to go back because they were the ones that offered it to us. Right. Um, so that, that's news, news to me. But anyway, we're all willing to go back to Hollywood. We're all waiting. Uh, but I think because the film was cancelled, they didn't have anything concrete for us to go back to. They did ask, they did say, well, well, we'll bring you back, you can come back, and we'll see what happens. Well, what does that mean? You know, see what happens. Yes, I, I, I do believe now, and I've spoken to Little John about this, if we had gone back and just waited, I think something probably would have happened, something yeah. would have come along. But, uh, you know, you, you, you've just got to get on, do what you think is right at the time. Right. And uh, at the time, we just thought, well, what are we going back to? They weren't offering us anything to go back to. So you may as well stay at home and, and, and see what happens. Sure. Sing, wait, and wait, and, uh, uh, and that's it. You know, you, you, you're in, you can remember we were young, and if we'd gone back there, yes, it was fantastic, and we loved it, and all, all the rest of it. But you're a long, long way away from home. Well, and what, what I want to know... And, and friends are. Now that you guys are as legendary as you are, and I, I don't think your show should be touched in my opinion I don't think anybody could do it as good as you but they're making a new one and have you heard anything from the Crofts as far as cameo appearances well I've always said I think I'd make a good uh, Granny Joy you know with, uh, <laughs> with the new the new, yes they did a, they did a pilot of the new Bagaloos uh -huh. with youngsters who were much younger than we were um and I saw a clip of it, so I don't know what's happening with that. I think they did a pilot as a test. So they'll probably, whether they're trying to sell that pilot to, to production, you know, television companies or whatever, <coughs> I don't know. But I did see a clip of it. And it wasn't, it wasn't the same as our bugaloos. It wasn't the same. I don't think anything could be, yeah. um, if you know what I mean. The set was so, was so beautiful. Uh, but the whole, the whole thing of the Bagalooms was was just fantastic. So to bring that back again in the same format, I don't think it you can. But and they haven't. The new Bagalooms was was uh, was different. It was fun. It was nice. I only saw a little bit of it, um, but it wasn't anything like our show. So no, it they, be. they were trying to to sell it to a, a TV company as. Uh, as um yeah, you because know, it was just a pilot, a small pilot. Um, but the, the the youngsters were much younger than we were. I mean, we were well. We had to be being brought over from the UK by law. Right. We had to be over eighteen. So we were sort of nineteen and twenty years of age. The new one was with an American children, and they were much younger. I think they were probably about twelve or thirteen, something like that. Well, that's for sure. Uh, you can't repeat magic, and I would love to see you do a cameo, but I don't know about this new so series. So would I. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, you know, luckily, luckily you did have a life beyond the Bugaloos. You did. And you did other things, and, and you made the British people proud by doing Sherlock Holmes. Is that right? That's right, yes. I did. I did a Sherlock. That was in, we filmed that in Poland, would hmm. you believe? Uh, they did a, an enormous set uh, in Poland, but obviously Sherlock Holmes, it was all with English actors, and they just flew us over for the filming over in Poland. They did a big set, just like, uh, you know, it was an English English uh, street and an area. Uh, the director, that was very short notice. I didn't have to audition for that. I'd already worked with the director, right. Val Guest. 
um, who had done some American films as well. He'd worked with me. He knew his work. And I just got a phone call from my agent saying, OK, you've got to fly out to Poland tomorrow to do a Sherlock Holmes. Wow. So I got the script. <laughs> yeah. So I got the script when I arrived. And uh, so that was interesting because it was in uh, Warsaw. I'd never been to Poland before. And it was the time, you know, there were queues of people queuing up for the bread in the morning it was it was tough times then in Poland so it was fascinating I did have free time I had a guy to take me round and walk me round so yeah it was interesting so yes I did a Sherlock Holmes uh, what some of the other things you did sorry I said what was some of the other things you did because I know you did a few things after uh, the bugaloos like Sherlock Holmes what was some of your favorite stuff you did beyond uh, the bugaloos Yes, I did a, I did a lot of uh, theatre work as well, uh, both in London and, uh, and other shows touring, touring round, mm -hmm. and summer seasons with, with well-known people, which were hugely successful. I did a TV called The, the Unvarnished Truth uh, with a, uh, I don't know if you know of him, Tim Brook Taylor, who was also doing a lot. He did the goodies. I don't know if they ever had the goodies, the oh, no. TV show in America. It no. was no, no, hugely no. successful in England. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't quite the John Cleese, but I mean, they were all from the same same right. uh, caliber, if you like. John Cleese, Tim Brook Taylor, uh, all, all that group, if you like. So um, they asked me to do, I've done a, a, a theater show, a comedy, not, not musical, with Tim Brooke Taylor, and it was just, you know, standing room only, hugely successful. And then they, the TV, the local TV station, asked me to do a TV one-off, uh, which was a comedy, again, called The Unvarnished Truth. Um, well, so what I is the... Uh, so then I did other... Sorry? I was just going to say, what is the Cut Price Comedy Show? That sounds really interesting. Oh, that was awful. <laughs> <laughs> Channel 4, which at that time was a new channel, uh, a, a new commercial channel, if you like. And the idea, the whole idea was that it was like a takeoff of the, of the old comedy sketches and, and things like that. Wow. So uh, I was obviously the, the main female part, but it was different sketches. Uh, again, with one or two well-known well -known names, a comedian, and another actor, uh, Royce Mills, who I've worked with in musicals and, uh, and other shows before. It's a funny business because, you know, there's a lot of people around, but it's almost like you end up working with the same people time and time again because people know your work and you work well together and whatever. So anyway, we did this TV series for Channel 4, and uh, that was a, a, a bit of everything, sketches and different ideas. But it didn't quite work, unfortunately. No, it was, you know, there's a lot of TV series that people don't hear about because it just has one season. And then, uh, and then because it didn't quite take off or didn't work. And Channel 4 at the time was a completely new channel. So it wasn't like it was the BBC or ITV. So, uh, you know, it was just brand new and a lot of people perhaps didn't even have it on their telly sort of thing. But anyway... Uh, it didn't quite work, so that was the end of that. But it was it was fun. I, I really am it, sorry obviously. that I really would have loved to have seen. If I could have had my wish to see you in Doctor Who, <laughs> that would a have lot been of perfect. people have said that. It's true. Yeah, a lot of people. I'd have, I'd have loved to have been in Doctor Who. Um, it would have been it would have been great fun, but I never even auditioned for it. Oh. Never auditioned for it. Well, we know uh, we know Caroline it, that you did. A, I, I think I'd have made a great a great assistant to Doctor Who. I agree with you. Absolutely. Yes, yeah. You you did a of course you did theater and you did a lot of uh, television. Uh, was that kind of was television kind of your comfort zone because of the experience in theater, or do you wish that you had had a chance to do more feature length films? Um, to do more, sorry, can you repeat that? 
I said, uh, do, did you kind of prefer to stay in doing television because you were more comfortable with it, maybe because of your experience in theater? Or would you have preferred to have had the opportunity to do more feature-length films, more movies? So I was never really, I never really did much work in, in, in films. My, my biggest love was the theater. I loved working live. I loved hearing the reaction from, from the audience. I loved the theater work. So I remember on one day, I, I was offered three different things on the same day. <laughs> I was offered a, a TV series called an Audition for It. I'd been offered a, a TV series called Crossroads, mm -hmm. which was uh, a pretty cheaply made TV series. It was on about half past six, I think, in, in the afternoon evening. Hugely successful, but the reputation it had was terrible. But it had the <laughs> Amazing. So, you know, you didn't get, shall we say, put it this way, as an actor, it wasn't the most respected show because it was, they were literally writing the scripts, I think, the same day. It was on every single day, five days a week. But obviously it paid the bills and, and it was hugely successful. The ratings were really high. Anyway, I'd been offered Crossroads. I'd also on the same day been offered a, a musical, which was on, on the stage, which was uh, my, my greatest love. And I'd been offered something else. I can't even remember what it was. So I decided I wanted to do the theatre musical. My agent went mad. She went absolutely <laughs> crazy. Are you mad? You should take crossroads. <laughs> you know, what are you doing? You know, this will, will make your name in England and all the rest of it. But uh, I just love the theatre. I've always loved doing the theatre. And it's that... Uh, that reaction of having a live audience. I love having a live live audience, whether it's for a musical or a comedy or, or whatever. Well, I, I felt I, very, very comfortable on, on, the, on the stage. Right. I must say, we, we certainly miss you uh, in acting and I hope that you come back someday. And am I right in knowing, I know you were, are you still a realtor over in Spain? Uh, yes, I'm in, I'm in Spain. I'd love to go back to, to, to Hollywood to, to do something. Um, I don't have, well, my agent passed away a few oh. years ago, uh, so I, I really am out of the business. I don't even have an agent anymore, whatever, but uh, that doesn't mean to say that if somebody said, well, will you come out and do this? Of course I would, I would consider it. Um, uh, I would love to. But I'd have to, I'd, I wouldn't be able to play it to a young joy again, mm -hmm. but, you know, comedy or, or, or whatever. But I, I don't think that will happen. I don't kid myself either. Well, you I've never been know. out of the business, if you like, for so long. Yes. But, um, you know, it was always my, my proper job. It's always my love and still is my love. I'm always interested in what's going on uh, in the business. But yeah. yes, if, if somebody wanted me, if I got a, a nice offer, yes, I'm interested. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I had mentioned that you once were a realtor. Are you still a realtor selling houses because of... Like but, property? Yes, in, in Spain. That's right. When my daughter got older, mm -hmm. uh, I thought, well, I better try and earn some money, you know, uh, do something. So I got involved in, in real estate, as, as you mentioned, which I, I enjoy oh, sure. uh, very much, or did enjoy, not anymore, but uh, I enjoyed it very much. It was interesting. I, my family, my father uh, had a, an estate agency in London. So I had grown up, it became a joke in the family, I'd grown up listening, you know, to talk of houses and properties and all the rest of it. And I wasn't in the least bit interested then as a teenager, I was doing other things as you knew. Uh, so it became a bit of a joke, but uh, then when I come to Spain, and I'm much older, I end up in, in the, the same business as a My family still has the business, <laughs> estate agency, my brother. Still has the estate agency in in London. Uh, well, it's about five offices, I think, four or five offices. Wow. Um, but it it became it became a joke that you know I come to Spain and end up you know talking houses. <laughs> <laughs> but my main job, obviously, was acting. When you when you've been in the business, you know, most of your life, uh, it's it's in the blood. Right. You can't stop loving it. And uh, as you possibly know, I, I went to England a couple of weeks ago just to do a, a, a convention. 
uh, personal appearance and of course met up with the other actors and everything. I thought, oh my God, I love this. <laughs> <laughs> I miss it. I miss it being involved. Uh, do, do you... So I speak to little little John quite a lot. There and we have talked about, he's still in music as a duo act. And we do talk about that, you know, going back, just even if it's for a short visit for the fans and whatever. Yeah. And maybe, maybe, but we would we would need help. Obviously, we're not over there. Um, uh, to be involved in some kind of a, a, a convention. Right. I can't say for the Bugaloos because I don't know about Wayne and, and well, Big John the cinema author. But, you know, if the first one that is off the Bugaloos, something like that. Yes, we would, we would do that, I'm sure. And well, I'm talking, we're talking about it, see if it's possible. Well, well get, in touch, get in touch, Caroline, with there is a, uh, a show that's out here that's a convention. A lot of conventions in, in the U.S. tend to be themed, like genre themed, like they do like science fiction or horror movies or whatever, but there is a Hollywood convention show. that happens out here that's called the Hollywood Collectors uh, Collectible Show, and they do all genres, they cover classic television, they cover kids shows, they have, reunions. They have re panel reunions of celebrity guests, I almost bet that they, they would be interested in having you guys come out and flying you guys out. Yeah, yeah, that so, would be interesting. That would be that would be very interesting. Obviously, we don't know who to contact uh, uh, about that. But if they're listening to this radio show, they hear word that we would be interested. Obviously, as you know, I'm on Facebook. Uh, Little John only occasionally goes into Facebook. The best thing would be to contact me on Facebook and see if we can see if we can arrange something. But no, I know in America the conventions are, are hugely successful yes. and you do a lot of them. Yes. In the UK, uh, no. I didn't even know that uh, this TV program I did, Only Fools and Horses, did conventions. They've been doing it for a few years. But they don't do, maybe they do now, because obviously I don't live in England, but conventions have never been a big thing in the UK. Mm. And in America... I, when when I was invited to go to the UK to do the this one I've just done recently, I saw it, it's hugely oh, popular yeah. in America. Well, that's because and in America, America when I spoke to, that's because yeah. in America we don't have royalty like they do in the UK. So to us, celebrities are yes. like royalty. Well, we will make an effort to definitely <laughs> yes. get a hold of the Hollywood uh, people that does the Hollywood show, and we'll just tell them you're interested and tell them, you know, get a hold of you on Facebook, because I'd love to see that happen. I'd love to be able to come to Spain and buy a house from you, <laughs> but I can't afford it. So. Oh, well, yeah, I can, I, can, I can sort you out. I mean, I'm not in the, in the reality business anymore in Spain, but obviously I'm interested in the Hollywood business, and I think it would be interesting. Which ah. is a, a lovely island. Yes. It's a really, really lovely island. It's beautiful. Do you, so uh, this is where, I, I, where imagine, I live now. Sure. I imagine living in Spain is a whole different world, but do people recognize you from the Bugaloos still? <laughs> well, I first came to Spain many years ago. Uh, yes, sometimes I was recognized by, by English people. Okay. There's not many Americans, uh, well, I was living on mainland Spain then. There were not many, many Americans then in, in, in Spain. I don't think there were even any direct flights from, from America to Spain back then. <laughs> but yes, English people would recognize me, certainly. Uh, and... Oh, are you Caroline? Are you Caroline? <laughs> oh, I saw the television last week. This sort of thing, you know, and, uh, which was which was surprising. Um, I shouldn't be surprised, but I was. I always yeah. always have been. Uh, but over the years, as time has gone by, no, 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 um, people don't recognise me now. Well, there's not so many English people in Mallorca that I come into contact with. Um, my neighbours are either German or Spanish or, or whatever. Although a lot of the programs I did have been shown worldwide. Mm -hmm. Occasionally, occasionally, about a, a month ago, somebody said to me, Oh, your voice sounds familiar. <laughs> yeah, it, <laughs> well, it does. It's the telly. <laughs> <laughs> it's the voice. It's the voice. And I said, Well, um, actually, yes. <laughs> 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 oh, right. But it's rare now. It's rare now, people now, because so many other programs have been made and are shown on 
on TV. I still get royalties. Uh, not well, from good. the Bugaloos, but from other TV. Well, you, you better... So, uh, I, yeah. I was just going to say, you're lucky if you get royalties. Now, you said from there, I don't know if you get from the Bugaloos, but it's very common uh, in America that a lot of the, the actors on the old shows, they get they get screwed. They, they don't, don't get, get anything. anything. Yeah. Okay. yeah, no. Well, I won't say we got screwed. We, we got royalties, I think, for 10 years. Oh. And then it was sort of like a, a, a buyout thing. Yeah. In England, sometimes they did the same. I don't know that it's they do. I don't think it's allowed anymore in the UK with the union equity. Uh, so yes, we don't get any. We stopped getting royalties for the Bugaloos many, many years ago. But from the BBC, I still get royalties. Not very much. I got one a couple of weeks ago, but uh, because it gets less as time goes by, right. obviously over the over the years. Uh, but it's always nice. You think, oh yeah, you know, oh, yeah, have a quarter yeah. quid in my bank account. <laughs> 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 well, you, you've led a charm life, and and you even got to work with Martha Ray, who is an American legend. Yeah. And I bet that was fun. And, yeah. And, and, and now, now Fantastic you're. Fantastic woman. Yeah. Definitely. Now you're kind of an America legend too. I mean, your 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 show was American, even though you're British, and you became an American legend like Martha Ray. So mm. you went full circle, Caroline. <laughs> Not in the same category. Martha Ray, obviously, with, with uh, her background and the films and, and the appearances that she made, the work that she did for the for the uh, for the army, you know, for the military, and uh, and everything, going out to war zones. I mean, what an incredible woman she was! What Absolutely. an incredible woman! Yeah. Yeah. Apart from being a very very nice person, so. Uh, uh, I don't know about me being a legend. I can't. I, I don't think so. But it's it's absolutely lovely that people still remember me and and the show. And uh, I would love to go back to to America and meet some of the fans and the people and everything. I think it would be really it would be really fun, both for for the fans and also for me. I would thoroughly enjoy that. Absolutely. Um, and I know a little John. Uh, would would be interested as well. We've talked about it many times. We had before Facebook came along. We had uh, you, you may have looked at it, the website, um, which was done by by Bill Bill Ung, which he did a fantastic website. Mm-hmm. It's still still there. But of course, with, when Facebook came along, then that sort of pushed over from from websites, if you like. So, but the Bugaloo's website is, is marvellous. It's got all the all the photographs, the shows, the music, loads of information, and, and, and fantastic. But as I say, now people can contact me on Facebook because it's open for people to to uh, to contact me, as you did, mm-hmm. and as other other people do. So, so yeah, it's it's, it's really wonderful. It's just back to do a convention. We'll go. Absolutely. Well, we need to work on that. Uh, I, I want to thank you, Caroline, for spending so much time with us uh, this morning. And we encourage our listeners, hey, go over, send Caroline a friend request, become her friend on Facebook. And if you haven't seen the episodes in a long time, or if you have kids or you have grandkids, sit them down, have them watch the Bugaloos so they can see what good children's television was about. Yeah, for sure. Oh yes, I agree. Good, good clean fun. That's right. I've, I gotta know your your daughter. She looked like you. Um, a lot of people say yes. Uh, she looks partly like her father as well. It's nice that she looks sort of half and half. Sure. Uh, she she's not in the business at all. She's actually she's actually involved with um, cosmetic surgery. Oh really. Believe. She helps out. She's not a doctor, but uh, she she works for a, a very well known, respected uh, cosmetic surgeon over here. Wow! And not I've had any jobs done. I have to say, uh, uh, yes, I've got <laughs> the wrinkles, but I haven't had any cosmetic surgery at all. And, and we give and, you we give uh, you credit for that too, because you could have got a discount. 
<laughs> well, I know I would, I would get a discount. Uh, I thought about it once or twice. You know, perhaps a little tap here and a little tap. And then I think, no, I'm just going to grow old gracefully. That's and right. Whatever happens, happens. <laughs> you, you look good. You're still beautiful. You really, really are. And, and you know. Oh, thank you. I don't usually like I don't usually like bugs, but for you, I made an exception. Because <laughs> oh, I'm, thank you so much. You've made my day. Thank you so much. Okay. Right, well, thank you, thank you again, Caroline, and we will uh, keep it. I will contact you. I'll see if I can get any information for you on the uh, Hollywood Collector that show. That would be great. Here. Okay. That uh, would be great. That would be really, really interesting. And maybe, who knows, maybe one day we'll be able to, to meet up. Yeah, <laughs> that would be fantastic. But thank you for spending so much time with us. And uh, keep in touch and have a great rest of your weekend. Thank you. And you as well. You probably deserve it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We, we get paid, we get paid by getting to talk to people like you Absolutely. because it really was a dream for oh. me because I'm an original fan and oh. I'm I'm reliving well, my life you. right now. Wow. Okay. Thank you so much, well, Caroline. It's, thank you. Thank you. And have a good night's sleep if you can. We will. About two o'clock in the morning, there. I think. Yeah. About. Yes, it is. All right. Thank you again, Caroline. Okay. All right. Bye bye. Thank you. And I hope I hope you get lots of lots of listeners and, and people listening in. Lots of fun. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure we we will, and we are because we have done nothing but get good responses about people being excited about you being on. So, fantastic, fantastic. All right. Okay. Well, thank you both very much, and maybe we'll chat again one day. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Caroline. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye.